Hey guys, Spirit of the Lie here. In this video, we're going to be looking into the updated Ethiopian unique tech, Royal Heirs. It's getting an overhaul in the upcoming April patch, and is not only way better than it was before, but I'd argue is now one of the best Castle Age unique techs, period. Its previous effect until now was to double the creation speed of Shotel Warriors at the castle, which was situationally helpful, though now that effect is going to be given to the elite Shotel Warrior completely for free as part of its upgrade. Moving forward, the new effect for Royal Heirs is that Shotel Warriors, and arguably just as importantly Camels, will now take 3 less damage from all mounted enemies for the very low price of 300 food and 300 gold, as far as we know from the patch notes. This applies a bit of damage resistance against everything involving a horse, camel, or elephant, which if you think about it for a moment is a lot of different units. We're going to look at how Shotel Warriors and Camels each benefit from this, which matchups in particular are most impacted, and how dramatic some of the implications might be. We'll start with their unique unit, the Shotel Warrior. Just to give a quick summary of the unit, it's fitting to describe it as a glass cannon, with extremely high attack for an infantry unit at a base of 16 compared to the Long Swordsman's 9. Their big weakness has traditionally just been the low HP and lack of armor, which is directly addressed by this unique tech, taking away some of that glass cannon vibe. We'll open by looking at Castle Age, and some things they might commonly run into there. For all of these tests, I'll have Shotels without the unique tech in Cyan, and in darker blue, we'll add the 3 anti-cavalry resistance. Also, we'll assume everyone has equal upgrades and balanced resources, and mounted units will have bloodlines, but no extra civ bonuses. We'll start with a classic matchup against Knights. In this case, even before the new Royal Heirs, Shotels could theoretically take that fight with balanced resources, giving them a slight numbers advantage. Though, instead of coming out battered with about a sixth of their HP left, with the new Royal Heirs tech, it's more like half their HP. In fact, one-on-one, -on -one, you can see they do a little better than a pikeman, here with the knight fighting the dark blue Royal Heirs Shotel Warrior, ending with the least amount of HP left over. Of course, Shotels have a bit higher cost than spear units at 80 instead of 60 resources, but we're off to a good start. If this hasn't immediately sold you on the importance of the tech, buckle up for what's to come later. Against melee cavalry units, that 3 damage negation is a big deal, and just to give step lancers and light cavalry as a couple of other examples, we see a similar result, going from instead of 30 or 40% of their HP left over, to now closer to 60%, or even a little more. These sorts of one-sided battles are what I'd expect from pikemen, and keep in mind there's nothing displayed on the Shotel Warrior that your opponent can check to see if you have this tech researched. Presumably, they will start to suspect something though once their cavalry get completely stomped. This becomes arguably even more dramatic against Camels, where Shotels go from half of their HP left without this tech, which is already a very good trade, to three quarters of their HP left without it, not even losing a single unit in this test. While we are counting on outnumbering the Camels here slightly to reflect the cost difference, and Camels aren't exactly a heavy hitter in melee, it's a pretty dramatic final result. Remember, this is only against mounted units though, and for context against infantry, they're barely better than a longsword one-on-one. -on -one and in fact lose to a good longsword civilization like Japanese, so it's not that they're completely invincible. Even the odd mounted unit can still win, and for example, they're easily handled by battle elephants, here performing quite a bit worse than pikemen, given they don't have the same level of anti-elephant bonus damage. To be clear, the damage resistance does still apply, and helps a bit, but they should be using their speed to avoid this kind of fight. So that's mounted melee units, but what about mounted ranged units? Remember, in general, Shotels have low HP and armor, and no X resistance against foot archers, taking just 9 shots to bring one down, compared to 20 against a longsword with gambesons, which itself is probably still considered weak to crossbows. Clearly, foot archers are still a great counter. With a bit of focus firing and moving around to mess with the Shotels pathfinding, a group of crossbows will generally win pretty comfortably. Of course, crossbows aren't mounted, so this is the same it's always been, with the tech doing nothing. But now let's consider what changes against cavalry archers. First off, if we just leave them standing and taking their lumps, the Shotels win either way, but much more convincingly with Royal Heirs. To put the significance of this tech into perspective, cavalry go from dealing 6 damage per shot, needing 8 arrows per enemy unit, to just 3 damage per shot, now needing 15 arrows. If you have a group of 10 cavalry archers, that's a huge deal, and keep in mind Shotels are also fast, so it's harder to hit and run. In fairness, I did still find it possible to win with micro, but it takes a lot of map space and a lot of attention, which is its own finite resource even if it's hard to put a number on. 
In fact, I think cavalry archers are low-key one of the units most negatively impacted by this tech. To look at another similar unit, against an elephant archer, the results are arguably even more dramatic given their high cost. In the end, while Shotels at point-blank range could limp their way to victory with a small group left over before this tech, after Royal Heirs, this becomes an incredibly cost-effective fight. I'm not even sure hit and run would save you in this case given how slow elephant archers are. Now, this is far from an exhaustive list of unit matchups given there are many mounted unique units. And in general, from a sample of melee ones, you're probably negating a quarter to a third of their damage. The mounted range units in many cases are affected even more given their lower attack in general with anywhere from 20 to 50% of their after armor damage being blocked. Foot archers and melee infantry units will still be solid counters, but Shotels are suddenly becoming a very good meat shield against a whole ton of cavalry and cavalry archer sieves. So that's the castle age, but I also ran each test again in Imperial, and while I don't want to oversell things, you can see for yourself, I'd argue the results are in a couple of cases even more impressive. To start with something like the Hazar, they were already very good from a total resource perspective, but they'll now end with double their previous HP left over. It's almost the exact same thing against heavy camels, where we see again they've gone from a little cost effective to very cost effective. Still, at no point so far have we seen a result flip because of the bonus. They're just turning what were modest victories into major ones. For the first time though, that changes with the Cavalier. Of course, the Cavalier are quite outnumbered admittedly as we're balancing resources against a much more expensive unit, but where previously Cavalier would easily win that fight, in this case it flips to being a balanced or slightly positive trait for Shotel Warriors. Mechanically speaking, what's going on is the Cavalier are going from needing 4 to 5 hits to kill each Shotel Warrior, letting them get off an extra of their extremely beefy attacks, which in this case is enough to flip the results on a large scale when cost is balanced. Mercifully, this doesn't extend to even generic paladins, as while they do noticeably better, they don't actually win cost effectively, and certainly not population efficiently. In fairness, massive alarm bells would be going off for me if they were actually winning this matchup, and while it may still be too close for comfort, at least things like paladins and elite battle elephants are units to be careful around with your Shotel warriors. Just like in Castle Age though, in Imperial, I think the most noticeable improvement is against mounted ranged units. For example, heavy cavalry archers again go from losing when standing still to just getting obliterated since they do half the damage per shot they did before this tech, meaning even with micro it just turns into a long annoying chase. Last one, against elephant archers we see another dramatic flip, going from Bengali elephant archers here actually winning more often than not to now just being swarmed after doing half the damage per attack that they previously did. The main thing I can say in defense of game balance here is that Shota warriors are relatively cheap, and with a sufficient mass of mounted range units with better population efficiency and a meat shield in front, adding some micro here and there, it's probably not as dramatic in practice as all this makes it look. Still, side by side, it seems to be doing much better across the board, and the question then is where does this leave Shota warriors? As I'm sure you can tell by now, I think this is a big deal, as they're holding up cost effectively against all but the heaviest melee cavalry, and take somewhere in the ballpark of half the damage they used to from a lot of mounted ranged units, assuming you're keeping up with infantry armor upgrades. Remember, Ethiopians are still an archer civilization by default, and given you require castles to create them, it doesn't guarantee this tech will completely dominate the Ethiopian meta. But any civilization relying on cavalry or a mounted archer unique unit, I think are going to have to strongly consider finding a non-mounted response to it. Now, this is obviously a very good unique tech already, but hold on, we're not done. This tech also applies to their camels. In fairness, Ethiopian camels are not that great to start with. In fact, they lack bloodlines in Castle Age, and in Imperial Age also lack the final armor upgrade, meaning even against mounted units, we're only talking about 2 more melee armor and 1 more pierce armor, while having 20 less HP than most civilizations, and up to 50 less HP than a very good camel sieve like Saracens. To start off again in Castle Age against Knights, this is, as you'd expect, a decent matchup for Ethiopian camels, naturally made even better with this tech. In fact, it turns out they do very similar to a Saracen Camel one-on-one, -on -one, despite missing bloodlines, which is actually quite nice, considering you save on the cost of both bloodlines, and Royal Heirs is cheaper than the Saracen Zealotry. They won't be as good against Foot Archers or Pikes, of course, but should work well against a player going full Knights. To extend the comparison to other Camels, it turns out that Royal Heirs is enough to get them over the hump, so to speak, and flip from losing to winning against generic Chinese Camels, so it's pretty clear they're situationally above average. 
They're nowhere near top tier though, and they still lose convincingly against Saracen Camels, which I think suggests reasonable balance, given that's what Saracens are meant to specialize in. So far, I'd say Ethiopian Camels in melee should be decent, but not earth shattering, and it's important to use them against the units they're intended, like against enemy knights or weak camel civilizations. Where again I think they shine, like the Shotel Warrior, is against mounted archers. The Cavalry Archer, for example, does again half the damage they usually do, and camels are so fast that hit and run is difficult to pull off. In fact, Cavalry Archer Civs may actually have a hard time against Ethiopian Camels in Castle Age, given they now take two-thirds more arrows than regular camels with bloodlines. Now, I won't show every possible Mounted Archer matchup, which can really snowball given camels already have bonus damage of their own against other mounted units to begin with. Being able to survive until they're in close enough range means you get very large swings in the results, especially when hit and run isn't a factor. Also, in case you're wondering about the Cataphract, which always seems to have a quirk when discussing bonus damage, in this case it's really straightforward, and they just do 3 less damage with each attack, so there's actually nothing special going on here. We'll wrap up quickly in Imperial Age here, as I think the pattern is pretty clear at this point. If anything, the story is actually their camels drop off in power, as now in addition to missing bloodlines, you're also missing the final armor upgrade, making royal heirs less impressive compared to a generic civilization. The easiest way to make that point is to show they can't even beat generic heavy camels anymore, though obviously the extra armor still helps to some extent. They're also completely obliterated by good camel sieves, like Hindustanis, highlighting they fall way behind what we would consider top tier. Whereas in Castle Age, I'd argue the tech made them a decent camel civilization, and certainly above average, it doesn't set them up for a lot of success in Imperial Age, at least in melee. Instead, it's only really against Imperial Age mounted archers that Ethiopian camels actually do pretty well. It definitely hides it a bit if you just looked at a pitch battle like this, where the units are standing around, as cavalry archers generally just melt to camels up close. And instead, what I think is more revealing is when looking at the numbers of shots taken from heavy cavalry archers, compared to other good camel civilizations. Saracens, with their high HP, take 25 arrows, and Hindustanis take nearly the same 23. Despite missing two important techs, Ethiopians end up only a little behind in arrows taken, but not as much as you might expect from lacking armor and bloodlines at 20 arrows, which is much more respectable than the 14 they take without royal heirs. You probably get the point by now, but remember this is going to be a very similar improvement in how they do against anything from elephant archers to mangadai, war wagons, or really anything ranged with a horse, camel, or elephant involved. So to give some final thoughts, it's pretty clear to me that their camels are going to be significantly better at what they're already good against, but are still going to be dominated by foot archers and infantry. Ethiopian camels should be pretty annoying against cavalry archers, but personally I think it's the Shotel Warrior that is more impacted, and almost redefined by the tech. That said, I don't want to over sensationalize, as cheap units tend to be favored in these sorts of comparisons, but it's a unit to definitely keep an eye on with the new patch for sure, and personally I'd put it in the conversation of the best Castle Age techs, given its scope and how much cavalry already dominates the rank ladder. That'll do it for this one though, big thanks to Admiral Zarkon, Woodruff, Jockster, Justin, Kyle, James, Samantha, and everyone else on Patreon for their amazing continued support. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.